Gormaigat, Count Corla. Minister, I am a proud Dubliner. I was born and bred in this city. I raised my own family here. This is a city of positivity, a vibrant city full of decent, hard-working people who believe in community. Like all Dubliners, I am heartbroken by what happened here last Thursday. How in the name of God did we come to this? Three young children and their carer stabbed outside their school in broad daylight. It's every parent's worst nightmare. Our hearts go out to those children, their parents and their families, especially the little five-year-old child fighting for her life. As those poor children were being taken to hospital, a mob of thugs set about destruction and mayhem. They were allowed to take control of Dublin city centre. Your assertion that nobody saw this coming is a water-weak defence. Everybody saw it coming, Minister, and for months. When the news broke that children were stabbed, people held their breath for even a hint that the perpetrator might not be Irish. They knew this would be exploited by those who seek to sow hate, division and mayhem. Very soon after the attack, organised agitators were on the scene, working their phones, starting to plan the havoc that unfolded. It was obvious to everyone on the ground that this orchestration was happening. In fact, a member of Mary Lou Macdonald's team brought it to the attention of Gardaí at the scene. People could see them organising through social media. At four minutes past two, Minister, I messaged my own sister-in-law, who works in the Rotunda, to warn her. I was in Dublin, Minister. I was here in Leinster House, and I could see this escalating. How did you not see and feel what was coming? Incredibly, the only people who didn't see this coming were yourself, your government colleagues, and the Garda Commissioner. We needed a decisive, early and quick public order policing intervention to contain the trouble and nip it in the bud. That is not what we got. Spokespeople for the GRA say that there was no plan, no central instruction given to Gardaí, that frontline Gardaí showed up to help because of WhatsApp messages sent to each other. This was an unprecedented, catastrophic failure of leadership on your part and on the part of Commissioner Harris. The public were placed in the way of danger. Ordinary workers, emergency responders and frontline Gardaí isolated, exposed and set upon. You lost control of Dublin city centre. It was mob rule. Yet you say the Gardaí had the resources needed to respond quickly and with force. Denial. You refused to accept that control of the city centre was lost. Delusion. You say that the streets of Dublin city centre are safe. Make believe. Tell that to the children, parents and staff at Gael School Kalosh the Wirra. Yesterday, those children came out of school. They were greeted with the sight of an intoxicated stranger who had urinated on himself and not a single Garda around. Six days after these little children were traumatised by the brutal stabbing of three of their classmates and their carer. Just think of the fear this created for those children and for their parents. Minister, what happened to those children is not normal. Nobody expects a guard to be posted at the door. What they do expect, though, is visible, strong, active community policing in the vicinity of the school. They did not get that. Not a single lesson has been learned, Minister, because you are not listening. In any other walk of life, in any other organisation, the person presiding over such a colossal failure would be sacked. Clearly, you are not the person to restore people's confidence in public safety. Your position is completely untenable. You should resign. Minister, please. Thank you, Ken Corlea. Can Corla, can I just say at the outset, my thoughts are still very much with the young girl, with her carer, both of whom are critically ill in hospital. What happened, those children, what happened at school is an unimaginable tragedy. And my thoughts are with them, they're with their family, they're with the school and with the wider community. What we saw unfold after that appalling tragedy 
was a small group of people who do not represent me, who do not represent the vast majority of people in this country, who took that appalling tragedy and used it to sow division, to sow hatred, to spread fear in this city, and to loot and to riot. They are thugs, and I will say it again, those responsible for inciting that hatred and that violence, those responsible for attacking members of Angarda Shia Khanna, for setting buses on fire, they will be held responsible and they will be brought to justice. Mm -hmm. What we also saw, Kian Corlia, was the largest mobilisation of our public order units. What we also saw were over 400 <coughs> members of Angarda Shia Khanna coming together to respond to these thugs. What we saw was in a very short space of time, these thugs being contained into a small part of our city centre. Yes, what we saw was devastating. Not one of us ever imagined we would witness what we witnessed, but they were contained by members of Angarda Shia Khanna. What we also saw were other teams of Angarda Shia Khanna protecting those who were trapped in their business, protecting those who couldn't leave their work, and we also saw members of Angarda Shia Khanna protecting minority groups and those in international protection centres. We saw the largest response and mobilisation of Angarda Shia Khanna in response to this horrific event. What we also saw were members coming from across the country. I have a report from the Garda Commissioner outlining what happened, outlining how he and his team responded, and as part of their response, yes, it was about sending messages to people as quickly as possible. And as part of that plan, it does include WhatsApp. How do you contact somebody as quickly as possible? But we also saw people literally getting into their cars because they wanted to support their colleagues. The two are not mutually exclusive. We saw the best of Angarda Shia Khanna coming together to protect our city and to protect those in it. And we owe them a debt of gratitude. Yeah. And of course, there will be lessons learned. An event, a, a catastrophic event of this size there will be lessons learned, and there should be, and Angarda Shia Khanna and we as a country will be the better for it. When it comes to the school and those children, I have been in contact with the principal numerous times. I have been in contact with Angarda Shia Khanna, not just the commissioner, but local Gardaí in Store Street. And let me reassure colleagues, let me reassure above all, the parents of those schools, the staff of that school, every resource that they require will be made available. Gardaí are there. They will be stationed there. It's not for me or you or anyone in this house to decide how policing should operate. But Gardaí are working with and engaging with that school to make sure that whatever need they have, whatever support they require, that it will be made available to them. Because no matter what we discuss in here, at the end of the day, they are the most important people that matter in all of this. Minister, you are not, and you cannot be, the person to provide the leadership necessary to resolve these issues because you will not even acknowledge that control was lost in Dublin city centre for several hours. So you talked about what we won't forget. We won't forget the sight of a lone Garda on O'Connell Street beset on all sides and terrified. We won't forget what the GRA said, that there was no plan. And we won't forget that the minister who is supposed to provide leadership does not even seem to understand the scale of the problem. Minister, this is what greeted those children six days after that traumatic and horrific event that happened to three of their classmates and one of their staff members. The school is terrified and traumatised. The school community want answers and leadership and they are getting neither from you. This this picture represents what Dublin City feels like to Dubliners. On your watch, Minister, you should resign. Gormaigat. Minister, please. Deputy, I think we all have a role to be responsible in this House, and I think you should consider that before you start waving pictures around. Here, 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 here. You've said a lot of things, here, here. Deputy. Your party has said a lot of things. Vulnerable Your leader has said a lot of things since last night, since last Thursday. Not a single solution, not a single proposal, not a single thing of benefit has come out of your mouths since last Thursday. Instead, you have used a tragic situation to sow division, to point score, and to create instability. I thought for a second, Ken Corley, last week when I rang all of the members, 
all of the deputies in Dublin Central. I thought for a split second that we would be united in our determination to face down these absolute thugs who wreaked havoc in our city centre for a period of time. Instead, what we had less than 24 hours later was your leader standing on the edge of a criminal scene, calling for heads. That's what we saw. Please. When I spoke to the Garda Commissioner last week, when I spoke to Garda members, I spoke to them to offer my support. When your deputy, when your leader rang the Garda Commissioner, it was to call for his head. When people in this country want stability, all you are interested in is providing instability. You, That's the difference between us and you. That's the difference between this government and your party. Thank you, Minister.